So the next clip I'm about to show you is on the Serbian president. He's had some really interesting things to say in this interview, and I wish I could get my hands on the full interview, but I can't. However, he basically talks about three major things. So he's saying that no one is talking about peace and it's all about if they win the war. And then secondly, he speaks about how um, there's an option on the table with taking out Russia and uh, Putin mainly. So thirdly, he then goes on to say that right now he is looking at what's best for his country. Do they have enough water source? Do they have enough food? and um, the bomb shelters. So people have asked me, do we have that here in Australia? Well, the answer is no. We don't have bomb shelters here in Australia. And um, we haven't been told by our media or our government that we should be even preparing for war. Spain has left the station and no one can stop it. And it looks like that and I believe that we are getting close to the last days of possible rethinking and reconsidering of everything that is happening in Ukraine if those big powers don't do anything in a short period of time yes I'm pretty much certain that we'll face a real disaster if you bet on the fact that someone is bluffing, it means that you have no better cards. But you just believe that the other side has weaker cards and you're not sure about it because you don't know and you didn't see his or their cards. Everybody is speaking only about war. Nobody wants to reach the peace. Nobody speaks about peace. Peace is almost a forbidden word. Please notice this, because they say we need to win in order to secure future peace, but nobody's speaking about a peace, and then, okay, you negotiate it. But you have the other side, you have to have the other side on the table as well. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, very strange to me that no one is actually attempting to stop the war. There is another theory which I can understand I don't say that I do approve, but I understand that West thinks that they can win easily against Putin. They want to exhaust him in Ukraine and then they will enter the space and then uh, Russia in today's territory and uh, shaped like it is today won't exist anymore and uh, Putin will be uh, overthrown and uh, everything else. Yeah, maybe that's possible, but... Do you think that is possible? Is it possible to use I Ukraine don't, I to don't weaken believe, Russia? Uh, well, it weakened Russia anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, is it enough to destroy Russia and to overthrow Putin? I don't believe so. In today's Europe, they all act like big heroes. But they did not say to their people that they will pay a very big price. And uh, speaking about it, you and all these leaders should do absolutely everything in order to stop any kind of warmongering behavior and everything. Why I'm speaking that we are getting close to the precipice, to the abyss. Analyze the situation of NATO and United States. They cannot afford themselves uh, losing war in Ukraine, which means Russia cannot win. Because, first of all, their political legacy will not exist or it will be so poor that they cannot allow themselves. Number two, uh, position of Europe and the West, collective West, in geopolitical terms will deteriorate so much that no one would be able to revive it and to renew it. And number three, 
it will open Pandora's box for more movements at least and hostilities against collective rest in the future. But take the other side. That's a nice story for one side. But take the other side. If Putin loses the war, Russia will not exist and won't be shaped like it is today. And then when you have these two sides so much far from each other, with their wishes, with their expectations, then you see that everything is at stake. Everything. No one can afford to himself or to itself, to themselves, to lose. When you have this situation, that's why I was saying to you, that's why I was saying publicly and not hiding it, that we are getting closer to a real disaster. Who is ready to lose 1 million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 and 15 million people? Ask yourself. I'm not ready to lose a single man, and we won't participate in that. But it's a question for some other people. How close are we now to a third world war and confrontation? <laughs> I cannot say a third world war, but a big confrontation, how far we are. I believe that we are not far away from it. Not more than, not more than three, four months. And there is a, and there is a danger to happen even before that. Where do you stand in this whole insanity? Where does Serbia stand in this we keep, conflict? We will keep peace, stability and tranquility within the region and in our country. Now, after watching that clip and the Serbian president telling the world that, that the Americans are thinking about taking out yet another political leader, and in this case, Putin. Now imagine if the world got behind Putin and said, well, maybe you should take out the US Senate, every single one of them. How would that look and how would that feel? Would that be like another Julian Assange bullshit? Because members of the public are going, yeah, why doesn't he? Well, maybe he should. Maybe the US Senate and under a rock for such a long time that they believe they're untouchable. And maybe that's what Putin needs to do. And maybe Putin and BRICS and all his other allies need to just focus on taking out the US Senate and senators. Because you can't go around making it public and without a care in the world to say that you want to go out and take out another president from a different country or because they don't agree with your values, your train of thought and your warmongering. So that's my opinion. Don't pay taxes because our tax money is supporting these grubs and our governments in killing and murdering other people and this war. We need to stop. It's tax season. Seriously, everyone, don't put in your taxes because we are the issue. And even when in war, we continue to support and fund these people. We are the laundering machines. So put a stop to it.